Tell us who you are. Hello, I am Lauren Lee Smith. Very nice to meet you. And uh, tell us, what are you doing here at MIPCOM? What brings you here? <laughs> what brings me here Absolutely. is my television series called Frankie Drake Mysteries. Frankie Drake Mysteries, which I've been told is running in both Canada and the UK for a second season? That's right. We just Fantastic. started airing season two uh, two weeks ago. Now, if I remember correctly here, there was something very special about Frankie Drake Mysteries. What, um, what is its unique selling proposition, if you will? Well, our show takes place in the early 1920s, uh -huh. uh, and it is a female-driven show about a young woman, Frankie Drake, who is the first female private detective in Toronto. And her, along with her gal pals, uh, mm -hmm. they cruise throughout Toronto and they take on the cases that the police perhaps don't want to take on or perhaps the cases that people don't want the police to take on. Okay, I see. Now, um, now obviously, this is massively relevant when it comes to a discussion of, let's say, gender-based diversity and actual fair representation in not just media and entertainment, but beyond, because you are... Your character, at least, is of course, um, is exercising a profession that theoretically, well, traditionally rather, is almost all the time associated with hypermasculinity. Yes. That's so right. you are kind of a very revolutionary role model. Huh? Yes, this character is incredibly iconic. It's part of the, the draw for me. But, uh, you know, she was a, a dispatch rider in the war. She traveled immensely throughout the world. And then she comes back to Toronto and decides to open her own private detective agency and sort of there break all the barriers yeah. and, and do what the men do and do it better. And if I just think for a moment, I mean, I'm not a historian by any means here, but I'm not going to pretend I am. But if I think about the 1920s, we're obviously uh, in the age we call the Roaring Twenties, right? So it's a time where um, basically women are embracing a new facet of their identity. Could you tell us a bit about the relevance of that historical background? Yeah, it's true. I think, you know, based on, on women's efforts during the war, now there's this sort of new sense of freedom and this new That's sense right. of sexuality. And, uh, and women wanted to have fun. Women wanted to dance and have sex and, That's right. and work and not just sort of stay at home and, and uh, care for the children. They wanted to be out in the workforce and, uh, and taken seriously. And I think, you know, this is, uh, it's still very relevant in 2018. We're, we're making headway, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's an important topic. Absolutely. And I think the, um, the key icon here that you're identifying is what we call the flapper. The flapper era. The infamous <laughs> flapper. Now, obviously, this is a timeless subject. Uh, I love it when historical fiction simply, um, when it demonstrates the deep implications of, of inequality on any level, basically, by looking at the past and telling us something about, well, I guess the present. Yeah? Do you think that, let's say one of the questions that we asked in a poll earlier today um, is, do you think that our... Uh, global media, the entertainment landscape, sufficiently addresses the problem of uh, fair representation of women? I think we're getting there, you know? Yeah. I think we're absolutely getting there. It's it's baby steps, and we've come a long way already, and I think we still have a ways to go. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I like to say it's it's... I think when we get there is when we don't need to address it, when we don't need to talk about it. The fact yeah, that you know precisely. we have a female-driven show, uh, That's when we right. don't have That's to say right. that that the the interesting thing about our show is the fact that it's female-driven about you know these four four women. I think. Uh, once that's a non-point is when Precisely. we'll actually get there. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you're making some really interesting points here because, of course, all of these things are connected. I mean, you being in this role today, obviously, you're not just uh, portraying a character that, that, that is largely fictional based on historical trends. But again, you're sending a powerful message even to young women growing up today and watching your show that truly, in a fair and equal world, they can be what they want to be, and they have to define themselves. That's, that's very lovely, and it's exactly why I so desperately wanted to play this role. I have a young daughter Absolutely. myself. Oh, there you go. And, uh, and I was really looking for something that that she would, you know, find inspiring and that I would be proud to show her one day. Uh, Precisely, and yes. And something to yes. show her that, you know, women can do anything and everything that they want to do. So, yeah. 
I, I mean, I think I, we could talk here forever about obviously the implications of what it is you're doing. What I find massively rewarding to see that you're doing, and it's excellent the way you put it, is that this is not only a personal creative outlet for you, but it's also something that is deeply connected to obviously the world that you would like your own daughter to grow up in. That must be extremely rewarding. How old is your daughter? She's two and a half. She's okay. still very young. She's, She's not old enough to young. watch yet. But, but yeah, no. you know, it's important to me that, you know, we... Uh, TV right now is very, uh, and don't get me wrong, I like it, but it, there's a lot of heaviness, uh, a lot of, of, of dark television, and it's all yeah. beautifully done. Yeah. Uh, but what I love about our show is that it is very light, and it's very family-friendly, okay. and you can sit yeah. down and watch it with the whole family, and I think so that's still very important. You are, obviously you're blessed with a more, with a more global reach. This is not yeah. uh, a controversial program in terms of tone, but it is controversial in the ways that we've explained. So actually, it's uh, there's a well, little yeah. The potential is 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 of course huge. That's right. That's the hope, anyways. Yes. Ah. Can I ask you, um, how did you get involved in acting yourself? Uh, so I got involved in <laughs> acting when I was seven years old, and I watched a little film uh, yeah. called The Labyrinth, called Labyrinth by Jim Henson. Uh -huh. uh, David Bowie and Jennifer Connelly inspired me, and I remember sitting down in front of the TV and telling my mom, "I want to do that. I want to do what they're doing." <laughs> <laughs> Puppets. No, that's Puppets essentially uh, brought me into the acting world, yes. Yeah, well, they are a form of escapism, and of right? course they appeal to the imagination, yes. as do, of course, de uh, detectives. <laughs> uh, you are uh, also kind of a, a, a superhero kind of vigilante. Um, I mean, we see similar trends with superheroes now in the entire Marvel and, 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 you know, comics universe that, you know, at least there seems to be an active effort to kind of expand the realms of of diversity and representation. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, it's true. One of the things that I love in particular about Frankie is that she, you know, she doesn't uh, use any gimmicks. She uses her knuckles. She's a boxer. She rides a motorbike. Beautiful. And that's, uh, it's like Beautiful. good old fashioned fighting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so she is upsetting, you know, the entire gender stereotype uh, mechanisms that we've all grown up with. And if we talk about your daughter being two and a half, of course, it's extremely young, but it seems to me at an age that vulnerable is where, you know, we all teach our kids without realizing it what kind of people we expect them to be. And gender is just one of those many That's right. hoops. And it seems to me that what you're doing in a way is, is in a very creative and fun way trying to upset uh, what seems to be so self-evident for a lot of us. Well, that's you know? the hope. That is yeah. the hope indeed. It's beautiful. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, um, basically, this is a production by... Shaftesbury. Shaftesbury. Yes. Okay. Any other programs that we might uh, highlight uh, done by Shaftesbury? What else have they made? Murdoch Mysteries is their Murdoch number one Mysteries. show. It's they like mysteries, successful. apparently. They do. Yeah. They enjoy <laughs> the mysteries. Yeah, it seems to me. <laughs> yes. When you do something well, you know, you go with it. Precisely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And Carmilla, I heard about the show called Carmilla. Yes, they also so. do Carmilla. They have Fantastic. a few new shows coming out uh, in the in this year and next year. So, um, yeah, Chef Spray has got some, some amazing content. Beautiful. Okay. Well, I, I, I can tell you, this, this is such an exciting interview because these are things that people are talking about today. I mean, it ties in with not just what we produce in terms of content, but the entire the entire Me Too discussion, which addresses, of course, deeply rooted inequities within the power structures that, of course, create our media landscape. Huh? These are things that are just massively relevant right now. And Absolutely. I hope that we can use that momentum to actually challenge these dimensions. Exactly. To keep Before moving people forward. stop caring. That's right. We need to sort of, exactly like you said, use this momentum, keep the conversations going, keep people talking. Precisely. Uh, Precisely. And I think, yeah, that's the most important thing we can all do right now. All right. Fantastic. Well, I don't know if we have any more questions for you, but I want to seriously and um, uh, sincerely thank you for coming on the show with me, uh, David Fox here. It's been absolutely amazing talking to you. And uh, remind us where our uh, viewers can find your show. So right now you can find us on CBC Monday nights at 9 That's p.m. Right. Okay, excellent. Uh, well, we wish you all the best luck. Uh, this is the second season that's rolling out now. That's right. 
That's uh, right. Season are two. Are you at, are you at liberty to tell us if there are uh, if there's a third season coming up, or is this uh, under the? Uh, well, we don't have any word just yet, but we're very hopeful, okay, okay. and uh, the numbers are good. So All fingers right. crossed. That I mean, we get there's a of three. course there's loads of things that you can't tell us yet. Many uh, things. No spoilers, of course. That's I mean, right. I'm trying to be detective myself Come here. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, but thank you very much for being thank on the show. So it's much. been amazing talking to you. It's been and, my uh, pleasure. We wish you all the best of luck with the rest of your career. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you very much for being on the show. <laughs>